program started here shortly. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Wendy Nielsen, the chair of the Young Leaders Society this year, and I just want to welcome you here tonight on behalf of the Young Leaders Society and United Way of East Central Iowa. Uh, before I go any further, I do want to give a special thanks to our sponsors tonight, uh, Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust, Paulson Electric, uh, Mercy Medical Center, and PEC Communications. So if you can please help me thank them. And I also want to give a special thank you to Tom and Sarah Anderson for opening up their beautiful home to us tonight. Um, Tom and Sarah are members of the Young Leader Society as well as Tocqueville donors and have been very active in United Way over the years. So thank you, Tom and Sarah. Um, well, I noticed that we have many longtime supporters of United Way here tonight, as well as many new faces who maybe aren't as familiar with the Young Leader Society or the great thing that the great things that United Way does for this community. And so we've asked a couple veteran supporters of United Way to maybe share their personal stories with us tonight on maybe how they got involved with United Way and also why they've stayed so involved with United Way over the years. So uh, with that said, please help me welcome our first speakers tonight, Mark and Kathy Gullickson, who are also this year's campaign chairs. <laughs> Thank you very much, Wendy. I'm Kathy. He's Mark. Um, when I got invited to this event, I thought, oh, cool. They're inviting me to the Young Leaders Society. And then, and then someone kind of explained to me that not everybody who was here were going to be, like, real young leaders. And so I understood then what my qualification was. Uh, but Mark and I are delighted to be uh, working with a campaign this year. Um, as you know, you've probably heard other campaign chairs say, wow, United Way staff, you know, they're, they're the best, they're the top, and they are. And so it makes it a really lovely kind of um, role to play, that we get to be involved with the great staff at United Way. And even better yet, we get to meet all kinds of cool people throughout the community. Already Mark and I have had a chance to have lots of, of calls with CEOs and talk to them about their businesses, and it's, it's super. And then we, they bring in their campaign chairs, and the energy and enthusiasm that we see in these campaign chairs are wonderful. So just being part of the campaign is, it's really a gift, and it, it's awfully fun. We're really enjoying it, aren't we? Yes, we Yes. <laughs> Yeah, he always always says yes, dear. Yeah. That's because our anniversary is coming up, and it's 40 years, so he's it's taken a little while, <laughs> but he's learned it all. <laughs> um, I'll just briefly give you a little bit of our background with United Way. It was back in Ann Arbor when we were after we were first married. Mark got involved with United Way there, and I think it was because someone asked him to. Um, so that was our very first, you know, involvement. We started giving to the United Way. It made lots of sense to us then, and it, may, it still makes lots of sense to us now. Um, fortunately, since we've moved to Cedar Rapids, we've had lots of opportunities to be involved in the community in all kinds of ways. When you get involved with United Way, you see that it's an organization that puts a lot of thought into what they do. So it's not just thought, it's also involvement of people. So we've been some of those people that have been on some of the committees. We've been on review committees in the old days that would review um, the applications from various agencies. We've been, I've been part of the um, accountability review team, which means that I've been reading 990s and those sorts of things for organizations. Um, there's just a lot of really careful thought and a lot of participation that goes into the decisions that are made with the money that you give to United Way. So as we've been involved, and the more we've been involved, Mark's been on the board, you were president of the board at one point. Um, so we've, we've had a lot of opportunities in different ways. And as you do that, you just, uh, it's sort of just it verifies that this is a great way to be part of improving our community and to be part of helping people. So it's just a little part of it. And I'm delighted to have a chance to look you guys in the face and, and know that some of you are giving already at really neat levels and that you have an opportunity to participate in all kinds of ways as you go forward um, being involved with United Way. I just want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to take the opportunities as they come. Be on a committee. Keep giving. Encourage your coworkers and your friends to get involved. Um, United Way does a tremendous amount of good. Imagine what $10 billion and more can do in a community. It's just, um, it's almost hard to think about all the people who are 
helped. Last year, 22,000 people gave. And um, that actually was the year before, actually, but <laughs> you, they've been involved too. 22,000 people gave to the campaign last year, and almost 100,000 people were assisted in our community, in our area. So it, those are really big numbers, and it's all because of people like you who get involved. So I just want to thank you and encourage you um, to give and to do what you can to give others, get others to give. And I'm sure Mark doesn't have a thing to say after I've said it all, but I will give him an opportunity to say something. The thing that's really funny is she thinks she's better on the mic than me. <laughs> we'll let her, li let her live with that fantasy. Uh, I only have two comments to add. One is, it was nice to thank Tom and Sarah uh, for opening their house. This is actually the 18th event we've had, but it's the first time they've been able to be here. Because they're mostly in Chicago. But I know the combination, so if you'd like to have a party here, it works out really well. <laughs> So that's comment one. Comment two. Uh, she gave you sort of the intellectual view, and I want to I want to go after guilt and emotion. <laughs> if you look at the gray-haired people here, like Hoffman and Marty, I won't talk about the women. Chuck. Uh, you know, we were the people in the '60s sitting in trees and and walking in in uh, in uh, parades. I didn't actually do the Vietnam parade thing, but I did stand by a tree that we didn't want to chop down. <laughs> And, and we, we feel pretty good about being children in the 60s and, and trying to push the country forward in certain ways. Well, I think every generation has that. And what I told people in my group when I'm talking to my age group is, okay, now that you get to the point where you actually can do something, you have to live up to the obligation that you made when you were a child of the 60s. And I don't know what all your obligations are. You're thinking in your head from your 20s and from your 30s, your early 30s, what you think is important to you. But as you attain the economic ability to do something, then you have to think back and remember what you said you were going to do and do it. And some of that is guilt and responsibility and putting on the mantle of leadership that you said you'd do that you didn't see other people doing and wish they would when you were younger and couldn't. So we're challenging people of our generation to do the things they can do at the Tocqueville level and other things higher in terms of leadership. And I would encourage you to do the same with your, with your own leadership group as you now or in the future have the means to do that. So that's my challenge to you. And what else do we need to say? And you're supposed to be funnier than me, so. <laughs> okay, there was this Irishman. <laughs> no, I don't have any jokes for today. Who do we hand to next? Thank you. Thank you. Well, next I'd like to welcome Tom and Sarah Anderson. If you guys want to come up and say a few words. Exactly. Ready? <laughs> Hit it! <laughs> that was our first trick. <laughs> we're, we're the funny ones. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here today. It's an honor and privilege. We've been involved with uh, United Way for over a dozen years um, since coming back to this community. When I first, I grew up in Cedar Rapids and moved back here from uh, New York City. And one of the first organizations that I was involved with was United Way. And I was thrilled to see what they were doing within the community. And as I got involved in the organization, they had uh, one funding model at that point in time. And what's important that you know is that the, the model has transitioned to what's called a community impact model now. And if you're wondering if there's impact to the, how your dollars are allocated within the community, it's truly incredible. Kathy touched upon it, but there's groups of people that are holding organizations within the community accountable and making sure that they're having impact with your dollars. And I love the model, and I wish that more organizations uh, had that accountability back to us. So, a uh, long time that we've been supporting it. Uh, we're honored and thrilled to have you today. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time, and thanks for your generosity and support. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, I'm Sarah Anderson, and I really won't take a lot of your time with my words, but one thing I do want to say is one of the biggest surprises through being able to give to the Young Leader Society and also uh, through the uh, Tocqueville Society giving money to many different organizations, it has been so enriching. Um, I have learned so much about this community through the United Way, part of that's the community impact model because the data that comes back to you, uh, knowing what you're impacting, what you're doing with, and what those organizations are doing with their, with the dollars you're giving, uh, 
that is that has enriched my life so much, uh, knowing what this community has to offer as opposed to what other communities are, are offering. Um, it is uh, one of the most touching things uh, is when you hear kind of those um, testimonials from some of the organizations. Um, and it just gets you that much more involved. Um, and creates a place that you really want to be, uh, and want your children to be, and your, your future generations. Uh, and uh, as Mark and Kathy and Tom all, all mentioned, it's, there's nothing like giving back to your community. Um, it just it enriches your life and makes, makes it so much more worthwhile to be in this community. So I hope, I know you're all here for a reason, most of you are already giving, so I just wanted to say thank you for doing that. And uh, those of you um, who are thinking about it, um, I just hope to encourage you to, to move forward with your thoughts and plans. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy, Sarah. And finally, please help me welcome Barry and Gilda Boyer. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, the closers. Um, thank. First of all, we we'd like to acknowledge Kathy and Mark for chairing the campaign. Where did you guys go? Anyway, um, thank you. You you are right. The staff of United Way, Lois on down, are amazing people, and it makes your job a breeze. And it's so enriching to be involved in United Way. I think that what Barry and I found is that we got a lot ba more back than we gave the year that we chaired the campaign. And um, we're pretty much lifelong Cedar Rapidians. And I would say that in 1984, when I started at Quaker Oats on the second shift, working in the cereal department, <laughs> um, Quaker has been a long time great uh, supporter of United Way. And I got that pledge card and I signed it. And I pretty much signed a pledge card through my next journey to Rockwell Collins, also an amazing supporter of United Way in this community and finished my tenure as a working person with a pledge card at Shuttleworth and Ingersoll, also an amazing contributor and supporter of United Way. So I've been very fortunate in this community to work for a number of employers and a number of, uh, with a number of individuals who really understood what United Way could do and the impact it makes in the community. And when you hear numbers that Kathy throws out where 22,000 people are contributing and we're serving 100,000 people, that's a lot of power for your dollars. When you write that check, it multiplies over a hundred times and and I have always been a big believer in United Way just because I felt like there are a lot of smarter people than I about what the needs are in the community and what that dollar can do and what I used to write the check for in 1984 when I was making my ten dollar a week contribution or whatever it was to what I was today it's different it's a lot different but that is the power of United Way our needs in our community somewhat stay static, but they change too. And United Way has a flexibility and nimbleness, and especially with Lois's leadership, I'll have to say, really understanding what we're trying to do here with this this organization. So I can't, you know, say enough about United Way. I can't say enough about thanking all of you being a part of United Way and really getting involved in United Way, not just writing that check, but you know, this is an opportunity. I look at all of you here tonight, giving up your beautiful you know, August evening to be here. And you're here for a reason, because you believe in the community and the mission of United Way. And so I challenge you to call Lois, drop her an email, and say, how can I get involved? You know, how can I be a part, not just writing my check, but my, my talent? You know, how can I, how can I better? Because there's lots of opportunities, and it's a great stepping stone um, for you to begin to serve the community. I know all of you probably are already, but there's a lot of things that you can get involved in. It's amazing here in Cedar Rapids, and I'm kind of stealing a little bit of Barry's speech, so sorry, honey. <laughs> but, um, you know, all you have to do here in Cedar Rapids is ask and be enthused, and the doors will open up. And Barry and I are big proponents about, you know, pulling people forward in leadership in this community and getting people, you know, that aren't our vintage um, involved. Uh, and that's what it takes. You know, and I see a lot of faces here that are involved in the community today, and I thank you for that. But continue to step up, continue to, you know, ask people of Barry and I's age, and, and all some of the older folks like the Evanses. You know, what can I do? <laughs> it was it was painful. Sorry, don't fall off the wall. 
Jack, please don't fall off the wall. Anyway, so with that, Barry. You never know what Gilda's going to say when she has a microphone in her hand, right, Jack? Yeah. Cornell grad. Okay, okay, moment. Go Rams. Moment of truth. How many of you would like to see a picture of Mark hugging a tree? It's amazing what you learn at these events. Mark, I think that would be a great theme for United Way. You know, you get right down to the wire. You could, you know. I bet your hair was longer back then, wasn't it, Mark? Uh, not a lot. Really? You were a conservative sort of. Sideburns. Sideburn. You mean like Elvis sideburns? <sighs> Well, anyway, thank you, Mark and Kathy, for leading a great campaign this year. And, you know, I would just, uh, Gilda said so much. I, I, I started to, <laughs> man's got to know his limitations. So, a reformed attorney. Honey. Right, right. So, yeah, so, so uh, like Gilda, I started in 1984 with United Way uh, out of college, uh, working second shift. We had that theme, uh, Square D manufacturing. I remember going into the meeting, and I don't remember where the lady was from, but she talked about the importance of giving. and. A woman that I worked uh, that worked in the factory on a line that I was responsible for elbowed me and said, "You need to start giving today because you never know you might need it one day." Right? You might need it one day. So I don't remember what the beginning amount was, but uh, I, I I checked the box. I was a little bit scared of her at the time, actually. <laughs> checked the box and have been giving every since. But it's been a wonderful opportunity, and you know, Gilda and I had a, a dream come true in 2010. We had the opportunity to you know, be co-chairs of the United Way campaign and work with Lois Bunce and, and work with the entire United Way staff. And I would say, you know, she made it easy. And, you know, you're, you're what makes this happen. Your decision to give, you know, is what makes this happen. I have a friend who led the, uh, the Fargo, North Dakota campaign, 2010, same year we were leading. Now, Fargo, by the numbers, is about our size, plus or minus two or 3,000 people metro area, right, when you look at that whole eastern Iowa and what they have in their campaign. She asked me what our goal was, and then proceeded to tell me that they were anxious to raise $5 million in Fargo. We've consistently raised over $10 million in this area, and I think it speaks volumes to the commitment and the giving heart that exists, you know, in this community that I feel so blessed of which to be a part of. You know, as you think about our future, you know, Gilda talked a lot about United Way. I would just leave you with this. You know, each of you has a unique ability, something that strikes your heart, you know. Each of you looks at something and says, man, I wish I was involved. You know, you're involving yourself in United Way. I would just encourage you to chase that passion and be an encourager for others around you. You know, I, I, I say this so much, I probably embarrass Chuck Peters, but it's the truth, you know. When I was younger in this community, Chuck Peters was the guy tapping me on the shoulder. Gary Streit was the guy tapping me on the shoulder saying, do more. You can do more. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I would just leave you with this. We all have time, we all have talents, and we all have money that we can give to causes that, you know, that we find passion in. And I would just encourage you all to do what you've already got a great start here. Be an encourager in this community. You represent the generation that one day stands right here and talks to someone else on the hill about and calls giving. Us old. And calls us old, right? <laughs> he talks about that giving. But again, thank you so much for coming tonight. And, and Tom and Sarah, thanks for opening up your beautiful home. I wish I had a patio on a far pit like this. This is, this is very cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. We really appreciate it. Well, I want to take the last few minutes of tonight's program just to share a little bit more specifically about Young Leader Society. Um, maybe for some of you who aren't as familiar with Young Leaders, um, it's United Way donors that are 40 years of age and younger that give an annual contribution of $250 and more. Um, one of the key initiatives that we target is early childhood development, and one of the ways that we do that is help fund a large portion of the Play and Learn program, um, which has experienced tremendous growth over this past year in attendance. Um, the Play and Learn program is an organized play group, basically, that helps children develop through play um, like I said, it's been a huge success and it's not only been beneficial for those children, but also equally important for the caregivers to learn that there's so many different hands-on, interactive ways to help teach their children and to bring their children along to prepare them for school. Um, it's been a huge success and I'm proud to say that Young Leaders donated $39,000 to that program success last year. So please help me.
Also, I just want to point out, we do have some Play and Learn facilitators here on site tonight. Um, Lisa Person and Kathy Weimer. So if you had not had a chance to talk to them tonight, I encourage you to do so. I'm sure that they can tell you many things about um, how successful the Play and Learn program has been. Um, in all, 1,617 young, le young leaders helped donate nearly $675,000 in 2011. Um, and so in addition to helping fund the Play and Learn program, um, those dollars also go to help support uh, the Babies and Books program, which is where every newborn child from both of the hospitals go home with a new book. Um, and it also helps to fund just the United Way's general fund. And so as you've heard tonight here, there's many great things that United Way is doing to address this community's needs. And um, obviously that's not possible without your help. So we greatly appreciate your donations. Um, and also appreciate the time that you are willing to volunteer, which they've also asked me to mention that the United Way Day of Action has been scheduled for September 20th. Um, I know they set the goal again, once again, to gain 100 new mentors and tutors. And I know with everybody's help here tonight and the rest of the community, we can definitely um, help them achieve that goal. So thank you once again for coming tonight. I want, once again want to thank our sponsors, uh, Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust, Mercy Medical Center, Paulson Electric and PEC Communications. And once again, thank you so much, Tom and Sarah and your family for allowing us all into your home. Um, I think there's plenty of food and drinks left, so please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.